Welcome back to my shed. This is where I repair, modify or make components for old vehicles or machines. And I show you what I went through to get the job done. In this video I've been given the task of extracting the sludge tube from this 1958 Triumph T21 crankshaft. The tube is neatly hidden behind an 1116 by 20 British standard bicycle thread plug and in order to keep it in place or prevent it from buggering up the works a simple assassination is performed to the thread. It's done by driving a dot punch into the thread deforming it sufficiently to prevent any further movement. Unfortunately if this task is performed with a very very big hammer extracting this plug becomes somewhat problematic. Anyway, this crankshaft was dropped into my lap and as the owner was running away I could hear him shouting the instructions. The task that lay in my crumpled groin was to extract the said plug and tube without damaging the crankshaft, if I can. The existing plug is slotted on the top like a simple slotted screw, but just to make life just that little more exciting the slot is a concave slot as if cut with a woodruff cutter, rendering a large but ordinary screwdriver as almost useless. To compensate I used an old bladed half inch square drive socket. It took about five minutes to grind the arc and to get rid of the excess material from both sides. Now that I'd spent a few minutes looking at the job and a few more minutes drinking tea I decided how to do it and I figured two more minutes and I'll see the bung freed off and the tube well and truly extricated. Oh how wrong could I be. To hold the crankshaft I used some old copper sleeves to prevent marking the crankshaft and being bits of old copper allowed me to open and close the vise as often as I need to adjust the position or to take the crankshaft out of the vise for a better view outside in daylight. What I wanted to be sure of was that any impact to this screw would be safely transmitted through the crankshaft journals to a rigid point below hopefully eliminating any vibration or stress through here. Now to clear the way ready for removing the bomb. I made a small but long chisel with a sort of 60 degree angle or blade on the end and I pecked away at the thread teasing it back into shape. Now someone's going to comment why don't you drill the old dot punch out. I thought about this and I come up to the conclusion that whatever drill size I use it will have to be long enough to afford the clearance between the chuck and the threaded part of the crankshaft and because there's a good step between the crankshaft body and the bung it will in all probability wander off the edge and break the drill. And that's my reason. After a couple of hits using the impact driver it had moved enough for me to have a go with the ratchet bar. That went well. Back to the impact driver. Very soon the slot yielded and the bung refused to turn any further. I could have drilled it out but I chose to mill it out instead. I held the crankshaft using a couple of parallels to hold the flywheel level and put a jack and clamp on the other end. This wasn't very stable but it was more than enough to get the majority of the bung out of the way. As I understand it in the Triumph C range there were three types of crankshafts fitted. Two types were fitted between 1957 and 1974 that's the 350 and the 500 twins and I also understand that the sludge trap is a standard feature in a lot of the Triumph and BSA engines. Having removed the majority of the bung I concentrated on fettling two small tracks out of the remaining bung material without harming the thread of course. Then a small segment of this bung was pried out with the scribe further assisting me with the removal of the remaining section of bung thread. You can see here that the sludge trap had done its job and it had very tightly packed the loose particles within the oil to the outside wall of the sludge trap. 
I like this sludge trap method and I've only ever once seen this system in a twin cylinder air-cooled Citroen car engine fitted to a DAF 44. It didn't have an oil filter, just a serviceable centrifuge behind the fan. After snapping out the small fettled section I concentrated all my effort on removing the remainder of the old bung while being mindful not to damage any part of the crankshaft thread. Now I think I know why the bung resisted my efforts to remove it. For whatever reason it looks as though a plumber's thread sealer was used when it was last assembled. I believe this because there was some greyish white residue around the bottom of the thread. The thread is dirty but it is still in good condition. And I don't believe that Loctite would leave this kind of residue in the threads. This is where I removed the sludge tube's locking bolt. And this is where I cheated a little bit because this bolt has been out before and just for the records yes it was just as gummed up as the bung was. No amount of prodding or poking about is going to remove the hardened sludge that's in this tube. So I broke out with a long reach 8mm drill bit and uh, more than a fair helping of release agent. Thick tar was oozing out of every orifice. It ponged a bit too. I know the journals look like they've been sandblasted. The truth is, I think they have but I was asked not to damage anything if I could. So that meant making sure that the journals are protected as if they were in prime condition. For this I had a washer and an old fork tube sleeve and that did the job nicely. In here is a dirtier version of this. I understand that some sludge trap kits come with a tap to suit the larger flange. I however decided that it would probably be better if the main body of the tube was threaded instead of the small bit of flange. To do this I used a 10mm tap. This would be a loose fit in the old tube and it will suit my needs perfectly. Anyway, I do know that there's still a fair bit of detritus in here and I do know that the tap is coming back out covered in, well, yuck. The tap I've chosen to do the job is not going to cut the full depth of thread. In fact, it'll probably be half the depth of thread. But in this case, I think that's a good thing, I reckon, as I don't want to make the tube body swell while being tapped or while being extracted. I thought leaving as much material on the tube walls as possible may prevent it trapping. This bolt helped extract the tube and when I'd screwed it into the bottom I screwed it out just a little in case it did trap the tube. Just a couple of turns of the nut confirmed that the bolt was in fact doing its job and it was surprisingly firm. You probably just saw the reason why I placed the protective sleeve over the journal otherwise I'd have been in trouble then. It took quite some time to withdraw the tube to this stage, but it was still not going to give up easily. Oh. You can just see the top of the tube now. Even though I'd pulled the tube out a good inch or so, it still resolutely refused to budge despite being doused with more releasing agent. Although I'm sure it helped. I returned the bolt with a short piece of pipe over it, being a bit bigger than the tube, it worked like a charm in completing the extraction task. Clearly both tubes are the same size externally, but the old tube has a much thicker wall. It's difficult to see, but there's still quite a lot of hard sludge in there, and that's got to be removed before I can do anything else. So to start with I used a stainless steel tub and by suspending the crankshaft over it I could pour diesel through it at first just to wash out the loose muck and then by using a selection of picks and scribes I could loosen more muck. Then I made a bore cleaner using a bit of 10mm wooden dowel. The end of this wooden dowel was then sawn to allow a bit of emery cloth to be slotted in and wrapped around it. The dowel was put in my electric drill and used like a powered scarifier or polisher. 
I made sure the emery cloth was well below the threads before I energised the drill. That made short work of the muck removal, but just to be sure I poured plenty more diesel through then, I finished off with the airline. I used a plug tap to check the bore threads, and honestly I expected the threads to be a little bit more difficult, that is, to start with anyway, but after knocking off a small burr where the threads were peened over, and removing the scum from the threads, the tap whizzed down with very little effort. Before fitting the new sludge tube, it's best to check that the locking bolt fits snugly into the receiving hole on the side of the sludge tube. If necessary, open the port out a little to be certain the bolt actually fits. Then it was time to insinuate the new sludge tube, but before anything else it was also necessary to remove the drilling burrs from inside the tube. I'm not worried about flaking burrs from the inside of this sludge tube because this crank is going to be used as an educational tool in a strip down and rebuild display engine. But I couldn't even begin to think what could happen if any of the burrs that remained inside this tube became loose, if this crankshaft was one day ever used in anger. Oh dear, my wife's just found out that I've used her favourite custard jog for pouring diesel over this crankshaft. Anyway, the sludge trap tube must be aligned so that the locking bolt can comfortably locate in the drilled opening and be pushed into place. Before the locking bolt was fitted, I confirmed the bolt would engage properly with the sludge tube by shining a light source through it. I couldn't see it with the camera, so you'll have to take my word for it. The shake-proof washer should be replaced, and the sludge tube retaining bolt is inserted and should be torqued to 33 pound foot. The bung thread should be coated with a thread sealant, screwed in, nipped up and locked into place by the preferred method, that is, by deforming the thread as it was at the start. But as I mentioned earlier, this crankshaft is to be used as part of a demonstration engine. So the torque setting, the thread sealer and the peening operation was omitted for that very reason. Well, that's what I've been up to over the last few weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.